What is going on guys? I'm Adriano and this video is an overview on AWS Glue Studio. Now in AWS there's a number of ways to process your data. What Glue Studio provides is an easy to use graphical interface that speeds up the process of authoring, running, and monitoring extract, transform, and load jobs, ETL for short. And it is available within AWS Glue service. AWS Glue Studio is AWS's attempt to make Apache Spark programming accessible to many users without having to write any code or managing any Spark clusters yourself. So this really allows for users of all experience now to take advantage of big data processing on Glue's serverless Apache Spark based ETL platform. Now Glue Studio was introduced September 23rd, 2020 and is accessible through AWS Glue service under the ETL section. Now, you're probably interested in knowing, okay, what is this service going to cost me? And the good news here is that there's no extra cost for using AWS Glue Studio over the vanilla AWS Glue. You only pay for the data processing units, or known as DPUs, used to run your ETL job. You're also charged a standard request and data transfer to ETL data from sources such as AWS S3, RDS, or Amazon Redshift. Now, if you're using AWS CloudWatch, you're going to be charged also standard rates for CloudWatch logs and CloudWatch events. So there are two main components that make up AWS Glue Studio. There is the Visual Studio Editor and the Job Performance Dashboard. The Visual Job Editor is where the ETL workflow is created and managed. We have the option to create a blank graph or begin a job with a source, target, and an apply mapping transformer. The source is the location from which you will be reading the data into AWS Glue, while the target is the output location of your Glue job. As I'm making this video, the source gives us five options to choose from, which are S3, RDS, Redshift, Kinesis Stream, or Kafka Stream, which are defined from a Glue catalog table. And for target, we have options to output to S3 or a Glue catalog table. When you're happy with your source and destination, you can click the create to enter the graph view. And this is where we create our ETL workflow. You create your ETL workflows by adding what AWS Studio calls nodes to the canvas. A node has three different categories. There is data source, data target, and transform. Data source is the data set that you'll be reading into Glue Studio. Now you might be asking yourself now, Adriano, my data is not already in AWS, but is in a SQL database such as MySQL, Postgres, or SQL Server on-premise. How can I use Studio to connect to my data and read it into AWS Glue? And the answer is using a JDBC connection option. You would then establish the connection to your database in the connection category in AWS Glue, and you then should be able to read your data from a database table through JDBC data source node. The second type of node in AWS Glue is the transform type node. This node allows you to perform various types of operations to clean your data. For example, there's a transform to join data sources together. There's also a drop column transform, which you guessed it drops unneeded columns. There's an apply mapping transform, which allows you to rename your fields from the source data set. And as you can see here, there are many other transforms to explore to see how it fits with your ETL use case. If none of these transform achieve what you need to do with your data, you can even write your own transform to process your data by selecting the custom transformer option. In the custom transformer, you can select the transform option and you can enter the custom code block here. I like that Glue gives you the option to add your own custom code as it gives you flexibility to add code in if you need it. The third type of node is a target node, which is the location you're going to be writing your data to. The two options available are S3 and the AWS Data Glue catalog. Now all these nodes are connected together in the graph through the option parameter node parents. So both transform and target nodes will have parents. It is possible for nodes to have multiple parents. For example, if you're going to be joining two data sets together, you would want to pass two data sets you want to be joining together. Now the cool thing I find about Glue Studio is that it actually generates a Python or Scala script based on your workflow, which you can see by clicking on the script tab. And as you can see here, the Spark code has been automatically generated in either Python or Scala based on your graph. There are several properties you can configure for the job that determines how the job runs and what resources the job uses. You can configure the name of the job here, the IAM role, which will have permissions to access your data sources. You also select the Glue version to use. I recommend using the latest version if possible. For example, Glue 2.0 features 10 times faster job start times and one minute minimum building duration compared to Glue 1.0. Language controls which code language your job will run in. As of making this video, we have G.1X and G.2X worker types. 
A G.1X worker type is 4V CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of disk space and is recommended for memory intensive jobs while the G.2X worker type is a 8V CPU with 32 gigabytes of memory and 128 gigabyte disk which is recommended for memory intensive jobs and jobs that run ML transformations. Now the number of workers are how many of machines that will be allocated to run your job. The larger the amount of workers, the more you will get charged. So be sure you are using the correct amount based on the size of your job. So you don't overpay for compute you do not need. Now the job bookmark feature is extremely useful and helpful during ETL. If you have job bookmark enabled, it will ensure that the job will not process the same data again if it has already been processed. This saves you time from having to write custom logic to check if those records have already been processed. And if you set it to paused, it will update state information. And if you set it to disabled, it will ignore the state information of the job. The number of retries is how many times the job will attempt to rerun if it fails. And the job timeout is the maximum time the job can run. There's a lot of advanced parameters that you can set, but because this is just an overview video, I won't jump into explaining that. So the other main component that Glue offers is the monitoring dashboard. With the monitoring tab, it provides you with insights to help manage and monitor your jobs, whether they were created with AWS Glue Studio or just in AWS Glue. By viewing the dashboard, it might give you a pulse of how your data pipelines are performing and potentially identify any issues that may come up. You can also interact with jobs you have run in the past by viewing the run details of individual jobs. The dashboard also links you to CloudWatch logs where you can find output logs or error logs of your individual jobs for greater details of the ETL job. If you click on the logs, it will open a separate window which will take you to the logs in CloudWatch. So to recap, in this video, we covered what AWS Glue Studio is and the two components, which is the Visual Studio Editor and the Monitoring section. We also covered the three types of nodes which make up an ETL job and the basic option configurations and what they do. I really hope you found this video helpful and can now get started in creating your own ETL jobs with AWS Glue Studio. Thanks for watching and please like this video if you learned something and please consider subscribing to my channel for more data integration videos in the future. See you next time.